All right, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about solving systems of linear equations by the method of substitution. So if you watched the previous video, which was solving systems of equations by graphing, I told you there were a number of different ways you could solve systems of linear equations. And that was some ways were graphing, substitution, elimination, using matrices, and more ways. But this video focuses on graphing by substitution. So Again, let's just recall what is a system of linear equations. A system of linear equations is when you have more than one equation that's linear. So for example, it may look like this, usually wrote inside of a brace. Those are called braces. Uh, 3x plus 2y equal 5 and 6x minus y equal 10. This is an example of a system of linear equations. We have more than one equation that's linear. How do you know it's linear? The highest exponent on the variables is one. All righty. <clears throat> so again, we're gonna look at how do you solve these with the method of substitution. So whenever you solve a system of linear equations, if it has two equations in it, then there are three possible different scenarios that can happen. And so the first scenario, the first case that can happen is you can have two separate graphs so here's one of my graphs. Because it's a linear equation, when you graph it, it's gonna be a line. So you have two separate graphs that intersect and they intersect in one point. The point where they intersect is the solution to that system. So that is the point, the X and Y value, that makes both of those equations true at the same time. So if you have two graphs that intersect at one point, that one point is your solution. We call this a consistent system. Consistent means that there is a solution and then it's called independent because the lines are independent of each other. In this case, there is one solution. Okay, so that's the first case of what can happen. The second thing is that we could graph two lines and they can be what we call parallel to each other, which means they never intersect. So if the lines are parallel, they will never cross, which means there is no point that they share. So that means there's no solution in this case. So if you end up with two lines that are parallel. Now, when we talked about slope, if you recall, I'm um, talking about slopes of lines, we know that lines are parallel when they have the same slope. So if you wanna make a note here, these are lines with the same slope. So this is no solution. We call this an inconsistent system. So remember, consistent means that there is a solution. So inconsistent means there's not a solution. And then these lines are also independent of each other. They're doing their own thing. So these, this is terminology um, that's used to describe these different systems. The third system is you can graph two lines and they can actually be the same exact line, meaning they lie on top of each other. So they could be the same exact line. In that case, every point on the lines is a solution. So there is infinitely many solutions in this case. There are infinitely many solutions. This is called a consistent system because there is a solution. There are a lot of solutions actually. And this one is called dependent because the lines are dependent upon each other. They're the same exact line. So these are the three different situations that can happen. Again, you can have one solution, you can have no solutions, or you can have infinitely many solutions. So when you're solving your systems of linear equations, if there's two equations, you're gonna have one of these cases. So the method of substitution involves various steps. So the whole goal of substitution is first, you wanna pick a variable to solve for. So you can solve for either variable. Now the hint is you wanna to try to pick the variable that doesn't have a coefficient in front. That makes it easier, but you can really solve for any variable. Once you solve for that variable in that equation, then step two is you take that result and plug it into the opposite equation that you didn't use. So step one, you choose any variable to solve for in one of the equations. Solve for it, take that result, plug it into the equation that you didn't use is step one and then what that'll give you is an equation with one variable and you can solve for that variable so then you want to solve the remaining um, equation 
Then you want to take that result, what you get for that variable, and plug it back into your result from step one. And then you want to finish solving for the other variable and go back and check. I know this probably all sound like gibberish. So what I want to do is I want to go through some examples and show you how it works. To solve this equation or this system of equations, 2x plus 5y equals 7 and x equals negative 1 minus y using the method of substitution. Remember step one is you want to choose a variable to solve for in one of the equations. A hint is to use a variable that doesn't have a coefficient in front. But if you actually look at this, this equation right here, your x variable is already solved for. So your step one is actually already done for you. Um, you don't actually have to go through and solve anything because we already have that x is equal to negative one minus y. So this is what it means to solve for a variable. You want that variable to be on the side by itself. Step two, you wanna take that result and plug it into the opposite equation that you didn't use. So this is the other equation, 2x plus 5y equals 7. And so this is why the method is called substitution, because you want to take what you got in step 1 and substitute it in for the variable in step 2. So we got that x is equal to negative 1 minus y. So we're going to replace x with negative 1 minus y. And so that gives us an equation with one variable. So now we want to solve that equation. So we're going to distribute the 2. You get negative 2 minus 2y plus 5y equal to 7. Combine your like terms. Negative 2y plus 5y is a 3y. Get rid of the 2 by adding 2 to both sides. Now I'm going to write it up here because I'm running out of room. So the 2's go away. You get 3y equal to 9 divide by 3 and you get y is equal to 3. So we're not done because remember when you solve a system of equations you have to find the value of both variables that make both of these equations true at the same time. So there's another step, step 3, where we take the result from step 2, which we got y equal to 3, which is one of our variables, and we plug it into the result from step 1. So in step one, we had that x was equal to negative one minus y. That came from right here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna plug in three for y. And then we get negative one minus three, which remember if the signs are the same, you add it together and take on the sign of the bigger number. So that becomes negative four. So we get x is equal to negative four and y is equal to three. Now you always want to go back and check. You'll always know if you got your answer correctly if you go back and check. So we can actually check three, negative four and to plug them into these equations and see if you get true statements. So let's go check really quick. So we got negative four, three is our solution, x being negative four and y being three. And all I want to do is just check them really quick to make sure that that is correct. So I'm replacing x with negative four and I'm replacing y with three. And the question is, does this come out equal? Two times negative four is negative eight, and five times three is 15. And so negative eight plus 15 is seven. So seven equal to seven, yes, that checks out. And so that still doesn't mean it's correct because I have to check both equations. That lets me know the first one checks out. Now let's check the second one. So I'll replace x with negative four and replace y with three. Um, and the question is, do that come out to equal negative four equal negative four? Yes. So that's just checking to make sure that my answer is correct. So negative four, three is your answer. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So we wanna do the same thing. We wanna solve this system by substitution. So the first thing we need to do is pick a variable to solve for in one of the equations. It's good to pick a variable that doesn't have a coefficient in front of it. So the only one that doesn't have a coefficient or an understood coefficient of one is this y right here. So I'm going to choose to solve for y in this first equation. So for my step one, I'm going to take this equation and solve it for y. So now to solve it for y, I'm going to add y to both sides and get 2x plus y equal to 4. And then I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I get y is equal to 4 minus 2x. Now, did I have to solve for y? No. I could have, some of you may have found it easier to solve for x here by dividing by 2. Um, 
but you would have ended up with some fractions and I know a lot of you don't like fractions so to avoid having fractions if you solve for the one that has no coefficient in front then you shouldn't have to deal with any fractions all right so that's step one step two I need to take this result and plug it into the other equation that I did not use so I didn't use this equation 5x plus 3y equal to 10 and so now I know that y is equal to 4 minus 2x so I'm going to plug 4 minus 2x in here for y and I'm going to distribute this 3 to solve for x because this gives me one equation with one variable so I get 5x plus 12 minus 6x 3 times 4 is 12 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x that's equal to 10 combine my like terms 5x minus 6x is negative x subtract 12 from both sides and I get negative x is equal to negative 2 I'm going to bring it up here because I'm running out of space so negative x is equal to negative 2 and then to get rid of the negative in front you divide both sides by a negative 1 and you get x is equal to positive 2 for step three, you want to take the result from step two and plug it into the result from step one. So here's step three. For step one, I got y is equal to four minus two x. So again, that's the result from step one. And then the result from step two is that x is equal to two. So I'm going to replace x with two. So I took the result from step two, plugged it into the result from step one, and that's going to give me my variable or my value of y. That's four minus four, which is equal to zero. So I get two comma zero as my solution. And again, you could check it. Two times two equal four minus zero. Four equal to four, that checks out. But remember you have to check it on both equations. So check it here, five times two plus three times zero equal 10. So I'm checking this second equation right here. Five times two is 10, three times zero is zero. 10 equal 10, that checks out. So that lets me know that two comma zero is my solution, x equal to two and y equal to zero. So this would be the solution to this system of equations. Now, since there is one solution to this equation, then this system would be considered a consistent, independent, system and because if you go back and you look at those three different scenarios of what could happen this will be the case where there are two lines that intersect at one point because there's one solution okay let's do another example this is example three we want to solve this system by substitution so again step one we need to choose a variable to solve for in one of the equations so i'm going to choose to solve for y in this first equation why did i pick y because there's no coefficient in front. Now you could choose whichever one you want, but again, it makes your life a little bit easier if you choose the one that has no coefficient in front. So step one, I'm gonna take three X minus Y equal four, and I'm gonna solve for Y. So I'm gonna subtract three X from both sides, and I get negative Y equal to negative three X plus four. And then I'm gonna get rid of this negative. So remember that sign stays in front of that Y. But I got to get rid of that sign, so I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And I get y equal, so that basically changes the sign of everything. So y equal to 3x minus 4. So that's step 1. Step 2, I'm going to take this result and plug it back into the other equation that I didn't use. So I didn't use this equation, so for step 2, I am going to take negative 9x plus 3y equal to negative 12. So remember I solved for y, y is equal to 3x minus four. So I'm gonna replace y with 3x minus four. So negative nine x plus three times three x minus four equal to negative 12. That's supposed to be a negative 12. Okay, so I'm going to move this up here. I'm gonna finish solving this over here in this space. Uh, here I need to distribute the three. So I have negative nine x when I distribute this three, three times three X is a positive nine X and three times negative four is a negative 12. So I'm 
So look, there's negative 9x and 9x cancels. And I'm left with negative 12 equal to negative 12. So now, what ends up happening here is anytime your variables cancel out, then you're going to end up, either end up with the situation where the lines are parallel or the situation where the lines are directly on top of each other. Now, the way you determine which one it is, is you look at the statement that's left after the variables are canceled. If the statement that's left is true, then that's the case where there are infinitely many solutions. That means the lines are exactly the same. If the statement is false, which means that'll never happen, that's the case where there is no solution. So if your variables cancel out, you wanna to look to see if you're left with a true or a false statement. If it's a true statement, you have infinitely many solutions. If it's a false statement, you have no solutions. So in this case, that last statement is true. So we have the case here where there are infinitely many solutions. So this system is called a dependent, consistent, system or consistent dependent remember consistent means there's a solution dependent means that the lines are basically the same they're depending upon each other and so this is what a system would look like solving it by substitution that has infinitely many solutions okay here's the last example that i'm going to work for you um this one solved by substitution here's the system x equal 5 minus 2y 2x plus 4y equals 6. so the first thing we need to do is find a variable to solve for in one of the equations Actually, x is already solved for in this first equation. So step one is already done. We don't have to do it, and it gives us 5 minus 2y. x is equal to 5 minus 2y. So step two, we want to take that result and plug it into the other equation that we didn't use for step one. So this is the equation that we didn't use, 2x plus 4y equals 6. We solve for x. x is equal to 5 minus 2y. So I want to take that and plug it in for x. So I get 2 times 5 minus 2y plus 4y equal to 6. And so that gives us one equation with one variable y. So we can solve for y. So I need to distribute this 2. And that gives me 10 minus 4y plus 4y equal to 6. Well, check this out. The negative 4y and the positive 4y, they cancel. And that leaves me with 10 equal to 6. So remember, just like in the last example, anytime your variables cancel, you want to look to see if you're left with a true statement or a false statement. If it's a true statement, that's infinitely many solutions. If it's a false statement, that's no solution. So let's look at our last statement. 10 equal to 6. Nope. 10 will never equal to 6. That's false. So this is the system where there is no solution. That means the lines are parallel to each other, if you remember that. Um, the lines are parallel. We call this an inconsistent system. Inconsistent means there's no solution. And then the lines are also independent. So again, depending on your homework platform, it may or may not ask you about the name of the system. But there is definitely no solution to the system. That means there is no value of x and y that'll make both of those equations true at the same time. Okay, I want you to actually try this problem on your own. So pause the video for a minute. Yeah. Pause the video and see if you can solve this system of equations by substitution. So 3x plus 4 equal negative y and 2x plus y equal to 0. See if you can solve that by substitution. So pause it and give it a shot. So what did you get as a solution? So hopefully you got negative 4 comma 8 because that is the answer so if you got that then you are good to go you can move on to the next video if you like this video if it helped you in any way make sure you hit the like button also if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel um, and if you want to know whenever i release new videos hit the bell button and you'll get a notification every time i release a new video now if you want to stick around and see how i work this problem i'm going to actually show you how you got that answer negative four eight um so you have to first pick a variable to solve for. And if you go with my hint, use the variable that has no coefficient in front, then you should have chosen to solve for y in the second equation. Now, you could have chosen for, to solve for y here too. You should still get the same answer in the end. But I'm going to solve for y in the second equation. So 2x plus y equals 0. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I get y is equal to negative 2x. 
Now I'm going to take that result and I'm going to plug it in to the other equation that I didn't use. So in step two, I did not use 3x plus 4 equal negative y. So I'm going to replace the fact that I know that y is equal to negative 2x. I'm going to replace that here. So I get 3x plus 4 equal to negative negative 2x. Well, negative negative 2x becomes a positive 2x. So that's 3x plus 4 equal to a positive 2x. Now I need to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So I can get all of my x's on one side. And I get 4 is equal to negative x. 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. So that's a negative 1x. I need to get rid of that negative. So divide both sides by negative. And I get that x is equal to negative 4. So I got x. Now I need to go solve for y. So I'm going to take that result. Step 3. Take that result and plug it back into the result from step 1. So y is equal to negative 2x. I now know that x is negative 4, so I'm going to replace x with negative 4, and I get y is equal to 8. So your solution comes out to be negative 4, 8. And remember, you can go back and check it. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I've showed you in all the other examples, but you could go back and check it and plug it in and make sure it works. But negative 4, 8 is your solution. Thanks for tuning in, and make sure you watch the next video, which is Solving Systems of Equations by Elimination.